everyone, this is Nikki Rowland and today I have a video to share or a layout to share for Coco Vanilla Studio. I'm using the very beautiful new Bloom and Grow collection. Um, so I have a six by eight photo. Now this is one that was taken at uh, like a theme park um, or it's a zoo actually in Lanzarote and um, they print the photos for you. So I didn't, haven't printed it at this size. This is actually my nemesis photo size, six by eight, I hate. Uh, <laughs> um, but all of the photos, like school photos and photos at theme parks all seems to come in six by eight, which drives me to distraction. But anyway, um, I've actually trimmed it down slightly, so it's still six inches high, but it's only seven and a quarter inches wide, and that makes it a little bit better for me. I prefer that. I just find that the eight inches takes up too much room, but not enough. Do you know what I mean? It's it just doesn't it just doesn't quite work. Um, anywhere I put it on the layout, I have these awkward places, awkward gaps. So um, so anyway, it's my nemesis photo size, but sometimes it's good to work with your nemesis, right? Because that way you. Uh, get out of your comfort zone and face your demons. Um, so, uh, so anyway, I've trimmed it down slightly to seven and a quarter wide and I've cut that amazing stripy paper down to the same width. So it's also seven and a quarter. So I'm hoping that my large photo will become part of the layout as opposed to um, a, a layout, a photo stuck on, if that makes sense. So it becomes part of the design is kind of what I'm going for. Um, so like I said, I've cut the stripy paper to seven and a quarter and um, I have cut all the beautiful stripes apart, um, distressed the edges and then sticking them back together. Now getting them, or not sticking them back together, but sticking them onto the white background. So getting them perfectly straight is a little tricky. So I'm being very careful not to um, press my um, stripes down too hard in case I need to move, um, move any of them at any point. I should probably draw some lines and do some measuring, um, but uh, I tend not to do that. So um, <laughs> um, we will, um, so yeah, I'm just, if it's wonky, it's wonky. I'm just going to have to live with that decision. Um, but um, I wanted to have all of the colours showing. Um, and can you see how I've managed to work it so that I have a bit of yellow top and bottom of the photo, um, which I really like. I, I love scrapbooking with yellow. I always feel that yellow is quite an important colour. It brightens everything up. It's the colour of the sun. Um, and, um, and it's my little boy's favourite colour as well. So that helps make means that I like it even more because he likes it. Um, so, um, so yes, yeah, so I've got the yellow shining out of either side and I've managed to get, I think, all the colours showing um, of, of those stripes, which I'm really, really happy about. Um, okay, so um, I am going to use one of those uh, chip, raw chipboard titles, just going to use the word hello, um, and I'm going to add my own title um, underneath it. So I'm going to make it Hello Parrots, and I'm going to add that with some little alphabet stickers. Um, but to start off with, I need to um, do something with this raw chipboard, and um, for any of you who watched my videos in um, September, you'll know that I uh, ordered from Amazon um, a new pot of gold embossing powder. So this is the first time that I've used it. Um, uh, there was an incident with it. I left it on my table the day it arrived and then my uh, six-year-old um, wanted to put some glitter on something and ended up with it literally everywhere. Uh, so <laughs> so um, anyway, it had to be rescued and filtered a bit for, um, you know, bits of hair and dirt and stuff. <laughs> Honestly, life with a six-year-old, hey? Um, so uh, anyway, I managed to salvage it and it's perfectly usable and looks really lovely actually. So this is the first time I've actually used it for heat embossing. Um, and um, I am just going to um, heat emboss that and uh, then love how that embossing powder melts and it becomes this beautiful sheen um, gold color. Now, obviously the heat tool is um, making everything fly around and those bits and pieces are very lightweight so they're trying to fly off of my desk but I just held them in place with a paper piercing tool and uh, and then managed to um, get them get the heat embossing powder activated and melted. Um, so now I have this beautiful beautiful um, gold glittery title um, Hello, that looks much better than the raw, right? Um, and then it also means that it's not going to shed. So if I had just stuck glitter on there, for example, with glue, um, I would have ended up with a shower of glitter every time I touched the layout. So the heat embossing powder is um, is really cool for that. Um, so I'm just going to um, add my title in that bottom right corner of the photo. And like I said, I'm gonna use the words, hello parrots. Um, and that 
They are the um, mini alphabet stickers and I'm just getting those stuck in place. Um, they are very tiny and I always worry that they're going to slip around or fall off and sometimes they don't have um, lots of the same letter in the same colours. So I have to do a bit of a multi-coloured title there. So I wanted to go for a green, um, but I didn't have every, all, all the right letters in the right shade. So I've got mixed it up a little bit with some blues and some darker blues as well, and then green and dark green. Um, so um, anyway, but it turns out really well. It looks really lovely. Um, and um, I just wanted to make sure that they will stick. So off camera, I do add a little bit of um, glossy accents underneath them um, just to make sure they stay in place. They are generally quite good, um, but they're so tiny. They obviously have a very small amount of adhesive on the back. And because of that reason, I tend to like to reinforce them with something, either sew through them on the sewing machine or add some, um, add some glossy accents or wet glue underneath them. Um, and um, now I've got to embellish the rest of my layout. So obviously in the top right corner of the photo, I've already added some flowers. Um, some of those are floral ephemera and some of them are fussy cut from the large sheet of beautiful, beautiful flowers. So I think I've got two large sprays cut from the fussy cut sheet. And then most other things I believe are, um, are ephemera ephemera, uh, floral ephemera. Um, so I'm just going through and working out what I can use. Um, so I've got some birds um, that I'm pulling out of the um, ephemera. Obviously I've got parrots in my photo, so birds work really well. I'm generally not a big fan of birds on layouts. Um, I don't know why, I just, <laughs> they just never really appeal to me. But given that there are birds in the photo, um, I figure on this occasion I can go with that. So. Um, lots of birds and little bird houses are very, very cute. So I've added a couple of those in. Um, I've obviously got the big cluster over on the left corner, um, but then I wanted to do something down the bottom right corner as well. I couldn't go too mad uh, with embellishments because I've got such a large photo and such a large big element in the background with the stripes that I didn't want to overcrowd it. If I tried to add in more, um, another cluster somewhere else, it, it would have been a bit off, uh, off balance. Um, so I've gone for two large clusters, one top right, one bottom, um, sorry, one top left, one bottom right. But the one over on the bottom right, I've then extended down to the bottom of the page. So it, essentially I kind of do have three, but I feel that it reads as the one on the right, um, is all one cluster really, but it is in two kind of separate parts. So I've got the Hello Parrots, I've got the flags underneath there, that's ephemera that I've raised on foam pads. I've got a floral above the word hello or behind it. I've got the um, birdhouse at the bottom there, I've got um, a floral cluster, fussy cut from the um, cut apart sheet, and I've padded that out with a couple of other flowers from the ephemera. Um, I've also fussy cut out some beautiful cold flowers from the uh, speciality sheet. Um, it's on white and it's got gold foil um, and they're all florals or mostly florals and really, really beautiful. So I've cut some of those out and tucked those into my clusters um, and um, got all my birds, of course, some hearts that I've raised on foam pads and um, I've also added in some of the um, puffy gold hearts as well, the fabric gold hearts too, uh, which are really, really lovely. I love the different texture that they bring um, to the layout because they are fabric. So, and they're shiny too, which yay, and gold. <laughs> What's not to like? Um, <laughs> um, and I've also got the hearts that I heat embossed earlier as well, which are from the raw chipboard. So they are all in place. And I'm just coming in now with a few splatters of gold paint. So uh, I don't know if I'm using my new one or my Liquitex, I can't remember. Um, but um, either way, it's a lovely, I think it's a Liquitex one. So it's a dark gold um, and uh, I've just mixed it with some water and I'm just adding some splatters over all of the clusters. Um, I don't think I've done it now. I think off screen I add my journaling over on the bottom right hand side. I splattered before I'd handwritten, you see, so I had to do it later. Um, so there we go, all done. Um, you can see all my close ups there and splatters. I've also got some um, of the lovely phrase stickers from the accessory stickers on there as well. You can see some more down there. All right, so I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you very much for joining me today. And that was Nikki Rowland for Cocoa Vanilla Studio using Bloom and Grow. <laughs>